You got that cricket, Joel? Yeah, I killed it. <laughs> cricket business is done. You're all done with your giant flying cockroaches, oh, yeah. Vile. Everything's good. Right. Good. Good. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> okay. okay, now. Hello, we can start. and. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. And welcome to episode 17 of the Provisional Nerf News Network podcast. I'm KT. I'm here with Vile and Jolt King 627 Say what's up, my friend. How's it going? What's up? It is the 24th of August. We will be having episode 17 come out tomorrow, and then this will be releasing on the 26th. Um, as always, just noting that because... Um, We'll actually be talking about at least one thing that may happen the day this podcast is coming out, which obviously we can't talk about because it hasn't happened yet. Um, and uh, as always, of course, this podcast is the partner to episode 17 of the Perversional Nerf News Network show itself. We'll be assuming that you've seen the show and know some of the things in the show. Uh, so it might be best to watch the show first, but you can probably get make your way through the podcast without it if you have to. Um, and as always, well, what's up? What's up, y'all? Actually, I you know what? Forget y'all. I I'm excited <laughs> wow. today because uh, <laughs> I uh, I officially this week became a Pokemon TCG judge and judged my first event today. Um, just a little, little league tournament, a little, nothing, nothing huge, but that's been something I've been working on for a while. And that's part of why my voice is a little, I mean, my voice is generally worn out because I'm usually coming from Pokemon, which involves a lot of talking, but like, um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'm feeling really good about that. It was a big win in a month. That's been kind of tough. Honestly, it's been kind of a tough month. How are y'all doing? Good. <laughs> I'm just dropping stuff alive. in the background, but. Yeah, I've been busy uh, getting through the collection, actually. I'm, I'm organizing stuff. I'm realizing I have way too many duplicates of things. And uh, What are you up to now, to 35 Chronoses? <laughs> yeah, something like that. And, and you know, I, I, I keep saying, okay, wow, okay, I think that's all of them. And then I go into another bin, and there's two or three more at the bottom of another bin, and I'm like, "Of course there is." Yeah, but yeah, but I really need it. to. I really need to trim the collection back too, and um, I'm hoping to lean into that soon. I want to make room in my garage to have a piano, just like an old upright piano, and some other stuff. I just don't have the space for because I have so much nerf. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what it's been going on for me. Yeah, and Jolt's been working. A lot. Yes, I, 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 I have a job. <laughs> I, I, I do that. What the heck? What's with that? Um. Well, anyway, I like money. So we often, um, <laughs> uh, capitalism strikes again. So, uh, we, uh, as always, we start the show by going over stories that did not make the cut for the show for one reason or another. Um, one submission that did not make it was uh that. X-Shot Insanity Blasters are appearing in Canada. And part of the reason this didn't make the show, we usually try to group all the like, this is available here, and this is available here, and this is available here. We try to like group it all into one story, because it's not really like, it doesn't really stand on its own as a story. And there weren't any other stories like this. But also like, I don't know, I, I can't keep track. I maybe they were in Canada already. Maybe, like I just can't even keep track anymore. <laughs> Yeah, and it's 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 kind of it's kind of a non-story if there isn't like a bunch of them to cover. Um, like it, it can definitely help people know like when to like if you're looking for something specific, like when to start scouring the Targets and the WalMarts and the Toys R Uses, um, for a specific thing you're looking for. But yeah, I don't know. This just got skipped. We also kind of at the last second had uh, oh, and I meant to have this up. Um, there was a post. From someone on a fa on a Facebook group that was shared with us, uh, that was a potential leak of a new blaster coming out from Worker. Um, somebody going by Knobs with a zero instead of an O said the new blaster Worker Seagull will be released in five days, as well as new fifteen round mag. 
four color options, purple, green, dreamlike pink, exact words, and and ma- macaroon? Ma- ma- or is it like macron? I think like, that's no, a red. I think it's macaroon. I think it's is macaroon. Is it supposed to be like maroon? I don't know. Because uh, macaroon is like, the, two like O's. the French dessert. It usually has two O's in it for macaroon, doesn't it? That's, that's true. I've seen it with one, though. Yeah, I, anyway, I'm not sure. Other, other features include compact size, slam fire, 150 FPS out of the box. So it's a, it's a 150 FPS primary class springer. <laughs> it yeah. sounds to me like workers' response to the <laughs> unicorn, which, cool, I already have yes. a unicorn, don't need it. I haven't even seen it, and I can already tell you I don't need it. <laughs> well, and, and the thing beyond that with this, uh, we got some additional confirmation from what appears to be a pretty reliable source um, that there's supposed to be a release announcement on the 26th of August, which, if you're listening to this podcast on release day, is today. Um, and that's it. That's all there is. And we were just kind of like... There's really no story here. It makes more sense for us to wait until next episode and be like, hey, Worker released this thing uh, and actually have details and have some follow-up and like maybe it's available for order somewhere. So, Hey, yeah. I know I don't some know people how we, who are going to love how... that it's coming in pink. That's, that's, that's what yeah, I can say. Yeah, totally. And I'm like, yeah, there's some cool things that sound about this. That is a really, really saturated market right now. We joke about that all the time, right? Like, Primary class 150 FPS springers are everywhere. So, like, it'll be interesting to see what Worker brings to the table in this particular one. But I, I think know. these days that it's got to be something really different, really out of the box, amazing, yeah. blow you away to even get attention these days just because of how saturated the market is. Totally. I feel like the long shot cut through a little bit. Partly because, because it was price. a bullpup, which is just like a little bit different, and the price. It was so cheap compared to like compared to what it offers for the price. Kind of blows everything else out of the water. The Tryon was high quality for a low price. And the, right. the unicorn was in itty bitty tiny compact, extremely durable. Well, you've got a couple of things there though. Like the Tryon is basically you know, a modded kind of Nexus at, you know, essentially it took all the flaws of the Nexus and, and kind of built on them. And it was a little bit more expensive to suit, but still it was a better build. And then even the long shot has a unique mechanism that it, you know, the barrels going through the plunger tube, which is something that we haven't seen through, you know, obviously we had the, the community won the Taurus, but we didn't have one really available for anything. So it kind of, again, it's unique. And again, there's if it's not unique or doesn't offer something different that we don't see, it just kind of it just adds to the the kind of mass really that we see already. For sure, for sure. I mean, you know, it'll be the right, the exact right variety of this type of blaster for somebody, for some group of people. Oh yeah. Um, there's a lot of people who specifically like Worker too. Yeah, even co- the color options could potentially just be that. That's the selling point for someone, you know. For sure. Oh yeah, it's in. For sure. I mean, it's like what was it? Pink, green, purple, like, like great colors. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's cool colors. Yeah. Worker always has nice colors. I like their color choices a lot. Except for their gray. I, I don't know why they felt the need to make it gray. <laughs> their uh, gray isn't super exciting. They're appealing to their international market that you know True. wants that. Yeah. So, I mean, that's also a really good base. For painting. True. Very Start true. With Start with the gray. Um, and the last thing on here, which didn't actually have one of our normal sort of Discord post entries, but which I had uh posited um as interesting, is uh the Hampton Roads Blaster Club. So this is a Nerf Club, it's been around for quite a while. Um, they used to be called the Hampton Roads Nerf Club, and apparently when they started it, they actually made two versions of the logo expecting that they may wind up changing the name down the road. Um, and I thought this was interesting, and it'll tie into something we're going to talk about later when we get to discussing the Blaster Tag trademark. Um, there is, I think, there's always been uh, con- you know, concerns about like having Nerf in the name of a project or having Nerf in the name of your club um, or any brand name, really, but like obviously Nerf is sort of the Kleenex of, of our hobby where people just use that word to mean the thing 
Um, but watching, you know, this is sort of part of a movement of clubs moving away from having those words in the name. Uh, and I thought it was noteworthy uh, to see, to sort of watch clubs start to make this move and change their names to match that. Um, but we'll kind of come back to that when we talk about, like I said, the blaster tag trademark uh, down the road a little bit. Um, that was pretty much it. Uh, the only things that didn't make the show, um, and I feel like we can go ahead and dive on in uh, to talk about sort of the, um, uh, the probably one of the big, big things being talked about lately, which is the Dart Zone Max Omnia Pro and um, performance issues that cropped up in early review uh, work uh, and a pretty quick response by Dart Zone. Yeah, this seems, to... this is like, it. I, they learned from the Deuce Pro, I think. They learned, wait, yeah. wait six months is not the answer. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's I mean, they it's just short of a recall, you know? Like, um... It reminds me of the, the Recon Mark II from Nerf, where the original run of them was unable to take certain magazines, and they went and changed the mold and offered replacements to people who had the original version. Right. Which makes me wonder if that's why they're so cheap inside, because the Recon Mark II has, like, plastic pins and things like that. I wonder if it was rushed and they needed to get it out quickly, and that's why they had to skimp on some things. That's an interesting thought. I mean, I, I'm thinking a lot, too, about the Thundershot um, and kind of wondering how this happened to the Omnia in the first place. Uh, you know, it, it seems like the issue with the Thundershot as well as the... What was that for the chain with the blaster with the te Tetra... Tetra Shot. Te tetra something. Tetra Shot, thank you. <laughs> um, where it was the result of cost cutting and or miscommunication between the designing company and the factories manufacturing the actual blasters um that happened to busby a couple times in the last couple a few times in the last couple years uh, and i wonder if this is a similar situation where they you know maybe had pretty detailed specs for how the omnia was supposed to be set up out the gate and those weren't met um, you know what I haven't done too is gone back to the videos where they were initially showing off the Omnia and like trying to figure out someone must have done this right like you go back and you look at the early videos where they were showing off the Omnia and trying to figure out like is it was it doing these things then or were they looking were they using like an early one that was a setup really carefully and the main ones are uh, the ones that are actually being shipped maybe were built by a factory overseas that is not paying that level of attention to it. Does anybody remember? It'd be uh, worth checking. I'd have to look into it. because I, I, I think been that even if it was having it. issues, they wouldn't tell you in the video because that's the kind of thing you can hide. Like shooting to the right, yeah. just aim a little sideways. Uh weird trigger delay you're not going to notice that on camera yeah i mean pre-production oh, models I, almost, are... I forgot about wait hold on i forgot about this drac reviewed it a month ago oh wait you're right and However, um, not, have you enough considered nerf, it, it... not enough nerf did one two weeks ago yeah there are reviews from before and then, of course, there's the video from Dart Zone around the same time as Drax review. With Drax um, review, I would say you can kind of write that off as his reviews aren't really comprehensive reviews. Uh, they're first impressions. Uh, they they are first impressions, but you still can see him fire it. True, but he also you know? fired his warden, and his warden didn't break because he didn't fire it enough times to break it. Uh. So, so yeah, you take yeah. it or leave no, it. No, I know, that. but I, I guess I guess what I'm saying in this in this situation, it's just it. I, I think it's something I might want to go back and look at because I feel like what the things that we're describing for the Omnia are severe enough that like 
I feel like it would be noticed in even the most cursory review. I do remember um, not enough nerf actually giving some uh information because people were complaining about the trigger delay and i remember i think he did like a reel or something like that like a, a quick little video I, I think it was on his instagram mm. i don't remember but he was showing on his that he what he didn't have the trigger delay on his and he was like i, I and i think it was something like that he was like i don't know what you guys are talking about because mine my unit doesn't have that problem interesting and i i'm pretty sure obviously you know uh, you know, if he's in the comment section or if he's listening in, he'll he'll correct me, obviously. But um, I I think the problem with it as well is pre-production models and sometimes influencer models that are sent out might be on the same thing, though. And, and there is sometimes a slight difference between how they're built or even the, the company that is building them, the pre-production models, because those pre-production models are almost like samples. They're like, this is what you should be getting. But then what they do get is you know, maybe there was a change between then and, and when they actually started receiving them and there might be something off because who was it? I don't remember who it was. Somebody was, was it uh, Walcom or, or somebody else on the, on a thing saying that it was like veering to the right or the, the ammo was like really getting off centered, like terrible, obviously not just the, the trigger delay, but even just how the, like the flywheels were aligned or something was causing problems. Yeah. And that sounds like an assembly issue. And it, that could be, you know, again, pre-production models don't normally go through the full setup that they have at the factory. Um, they they kind of like you were saying, they do get a little bit of extra detail and attention, you know, when they're getting assembled. And maybe that production run just really caused problems with it. I don't know. I guess we'll find out, obviously, as, as more All unfolds. All I know is that this is a spot where when people were complaining about the Strife X price point and we're talking about how the Omnia was so great for so little price, I'm just going to say this price. right now. Hot take, you get what you pay for. Yeah. I mean, we, we put that out there when we talked about it on the podcast. I was pretty clear. I was like, I mean, like, yes, in theory, we can say this right now that that the, you know, the Omnia does all the things that the but we don't know until it gets in people's hands. And yep. so far, it's a bit it's still a question mark because now it's not really in people's hands. Like Dart Zone is saying, like, hold on, we sent this thing out. It's not actually what it's supposed to be. Just don't just don't talk about it. Pretend it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. We're gonna try again and then we'll we'll do it again. And then the next time it'll be right. And I which I, I mean like we you know, we we did our story and we did it as a big meme about this, right? Um and so one of the things that we didn't say is, like, in the situation where the product that you sent out is not what you intended to send out, kudos to Dart Zone. They've handled it, I think, about as well as you can. Um, you know, the request to not, to, like, like give them time to fix it. Um, the system for, I mean, we'll see how well the system actually works, but the system for making sure that people who have already purchased them presumably get free replacements um you know i i feel like they're doing a good job given the unfortunate situation it would be nice for the situation to have not happened in the first place but also i it seems likely that it has to do with the relationship with the manufacturer and that's challenging uh, to work with the factory with 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 factories that have their own things going on and and often do this cost cutting thing that caused some of the problems that busby had uh previously but it was different with busby because we're talking about a like like less than ten dollar blaster or like a twenty dollar blaster and here remember. we're talking it was about pretty a pro cheap. focused kind of thing yeah at a much higher price point but we'll see how well the re this recall situation goes this, um, you know, I, how soon we actually see the Omni out there. On that, I would just say that sometimes with, with certain products, and I've seen this in other things, other industries, sometimes the race to the bottom for price starts to come at a cost. And while we're trying to see, you know, we're trying to get high performance flywheelers, and there's not, there's honestly not that many that are name brand, I would say, you know, worker can, can be kind of included in that, but they've been around and doing sort of higher performance stuff for a lot longer than say, you know, nerf and dart zone and stuff for their flywheelers. But when you, when you really take into account 
that race to the bottom for price point to try to really get people bought into it will always come at a cost. We saw this with 3D printers as well. You know, everybody was like, uh, you know, back in the day, it used to be $1,000 just as an entry point to get a printer. And then there, used to, there was this huge rush to get the price point as low as possible. Now we can get mm. printers at $180. Right. But it sometimes comes at the cost of your time, your, your tuning, your, you know, you have to buy extra parts. You've got to do this. You have to do so much more to actually get this $200 printer to even function like a $450 printer. And, you know, we might be starting to see that even with blasters, like, you know, because it's coming from these these companies that are, you know, they're trying to get into the hobby space, which does yeah. deal a lot with markets and companies like Worker, who have been, again, around for quite a while and who kind of have a pretty even, good stronghold on that stuff. Even then, including Worker, there have only been, what, six pre-assembled flywheelers. There was the Phoenix, the Phoenix 2.0, the Nightingale, the Promark 3. Now the Omnia and Strife X. That's oh, and that's yep. seven. Or is it? My my brain is dead today. <laughs> I think, but no, you get you're making Number. a good point. It's still not. You're still the pool is very small for flywheelers. Springers are much easier. That's why we we have just droves of them. But the flywheel market is is fresh for companies to really kind of push into that. And, you know, even even if you really want to technically get into it, X shots kind of put their foot in the ring with an insanity blaster. It's not a pro level, but they've already started showing that they're looking at the pro line. So who knows, maybe later down the future, maybe in a year or two, they decide to to try out the pro level flywheelers. And again, X shots also known for kind of having a pretty good stronghold around the world and having a pretty good stronghold on very, you know, low cost blasters maybe they'll start to try to push the the bar down even further well it's funny you'd mention that because um the next topic that i want to talk about too is uh the uh, x shot long shot as it's been appearing in germany and switzerland and possibly other european countries we're still kind of waiting to see how this shakes out um but speaking of a blaster that you know requires that extra attention in order to do it at what it does We've all been talking about the, the, the long shot, the X-Shot long shot is this pr solid, pro-level, very inexpensive blaster. Um, well, it's solid and everything, but it's reading. plunger tube, and it's pusher. <laughs> and except, yeah, for, yeah. except for the plunger tube. Fair, yes, yes, yes. Um, true. Uh, but for these ones to show up... Now, okay, so here's the thing that interested me a lot about these lower power... Uh, long shots that showed up uh, is they still have the packaging is unchanged other than the lower FPS number. They still say pro on them. So at what point is it not a pro blaster if you're not putting the power level necessary to compete in that kind of game in the blaster? I would like, argue I, short darts. Yeah, I was going to say probably <laughs> that, the same. That's true. That's true. It 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 is and and one of the things I do like about the X shot is I think they've done the best job of a blaster that is hybrid full length and short dart. Um the prime on it feels like the same uh pretty much one or the other. Yeah, the only other really blaster appreciate. that really did that to chamber both, I think is the 1.2 because it used I a moving with the plunger tube. tube. Yeah, it, that's mm. the one thing it did right, is it switched to a moving plunger tube, so it eliminated the telescoping piece in the priming right. mechanism. So no slot. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we talked about... I know, Vile, you did some research on the uh, legal situation that may have caused... Yeah, this situation. So but I it's looked still into this. Kind of like I, I did look into it a little bit. It was kind of hard because when I was trying to find it, the websites I was pulling up, it was either like a Google, you know, answer, or it was, um, like Reddit posts or things like that. It wasn't really like a a, a reputable source that I could just quote. Like, oh, this comes from you know, uh, German government site that gives this exact thing. But everything I kept finding was pointing at the jewel requirements in uh, primarily things like Airsoft, 
So they that was the one big one that kept pulling up was airsoft requirements. For, and, for anybody that's not that's not familiar, joule as in J O U L E, which is a correct. measurement of energy, and so yeah. it's, it's measuring uh, eff effectively how hard it hits and yeah. how much energy is transmitted when the dart hits. Yeah, exactly. And it, it's just in the projectile in general. And under their laws, and this again primarily is for airsoft. It didn't necessarily encompass nerf, but I would imagine I. I I'd have to go back and look at it. I, I think it had something to do just with projectiles in general. They had to be less than 0.5 joules. If they were over 0.5 joules, they would have to be classified as an air rifle. And which if and I did the cal I went to a calculator and I actually calculated it out and I, I went and uh, had some screenshots of it. But when you when you look at the 140 FPS, uh, the calculation came out to, oh, I don't even remember what it was now. Um, oh, it was something like uh, one, oh, crud, I, I wish I had that screenshot right now. <laughs> it was somewhere, but it was um, it at the lower spring at the 66 FPS, it was something like 0 0.1. Oh, I found it. Uh, it was 0.19 joules. It was just about, it was just under 0.2 joules. And at the 140 FPS, and this, this was uh, assuming that it was a 0.95 gram dart. Like that's just kind of an average. If you put a heavier dart or you put a the 0.9 at, at the lighter. So I just kind of took the middle. Um, if you put it at 140, it turns into a 0.86 joules. Of kinetic energy so that puts it technically into an air rifle category um i was also finding a lot of articles about uh apparently the rest of eu was trying to get germany to uh change their toy laws germany telling them no because under their own their current ones uh it is safer for their toys than the rest of the eu so I, I just it was kind of like a rabbit hole of a lot of information and a lot of data, but based on even on the airsoft and the paintball markers and things like that, they cannot exceed 0.5 joules just for that weapons law in Germany. I'm I'm surprised to see I'm I'm not sure uh if you know Switzerland and, and other countries have a similar one, but at least under German weapons law, that's what I was finding. Hmm. The good news is, is the only difference in these X shot long shots appears to be the spring load. Yeah. So just swap your spring and boom, you've probably got a felony in Germany. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 but this, but I mean, this tie, you know, this ties back to what we were saying before, where it's like, you know, they've, they've done all of this stuff so that they can sell it here. And now anybody that's going to use it has to do all this extra work, has to be comfortable opening it up, has to access a spring, mm -hmm. get the correct kind of spring and uh, install it correctly keep the seal intact and like all this stuff yeah and even in, then if you're since you mentioned the plunger tube joel if they were going to be doing it anyways they're probably going to be swapping out the plunger tube swapping the spring they, they're going to get into it and just probably do the whole you know kit and caboodle kind of thing on it but it's still and and we've seen other people in the hobby who who are in places like germany and stuff who have higher performing blasters it's not uncommon it's just that and usually under these laws it's more of to be able to sell it on store shelves, you have to abide by these rules. Once you get it home, it's now, you know, it's, it's kind of now under your own like thing that you're going to do. It's kind of like us in the hobby where, you know, we can't exceed certain FPS for public parks because we don't want to cause harm to anybody. We're kind of taking that on our, on ourselves. But, you know, in these countries, a lot of the individuals are, are at least from the people that we know personally we've seen them doing indoor events or personal events or or they they have like larping events and they they will build and do their own and they're doing it in private venues they're not really um uh doing them in public either because i'm pretty sure and that was another thing again going down a rabbit hole if i threw some of my stuff i might have caught this and I'm, i might be misremembering it but it was um i'm pretty sure that they cannot be used or uh, shown in public places anyway so they are kind of like this is a toy that you play with you know at your own private property kind of a thing like you don't take it out to public places so there's already kind of that that level of of you know restriction on it anyways 
So, but yeah, it again, it just kind of boils into it's interesting to see them only change the box and claim their, their FPS claim, but it's still the same blaster with a weak spring. Yeah. It is nice. It, I, I kind of, I can't fault them. They're just trying to stick within the rules and the laws. Uh, and we I also, mean, they, they already like, got called on this once, supposedly. Yeah. Uh, I think they got well, sued it, for some of their rival products. I think hitting over it's the limit. weird. It's weird because it, it feels weirdly deceptive because the hobby does so much communicating for these brands. Yeah. And the long shot everywhere is look at this blaster that hits 150 out of the box and only costs X amount of dollars. And you go and you buy it and you have to be looking pretty carefully to catch that the number has changed. I honestly yeah, would put not, it in the same category as gray trigger blasters. It's the same thing. Yeah. Hasbro's yeah. Been it's doing a very similar idea. Very similar idea, except I think it's a little bit different, right? Because Grey Trigger Blasters, the target audience is, is parents picking up toys for kids. We find it interesting because we find the differences interesting. And, um, but realistically, if every kid in Australia or whatever has the blaster that shoots at a lower FPS, it doesn't really matter, right? Because they're all playing at the same level. Um, but it is different. It is, you know, a different blaster for a different market. This is like you have a blaster that is specifically being marketed towards people who want a specific performance level. And this particular version of it doesn't have the same performance level, but it's being advertised the same way as the version that does. Yeah. So it, it is kind of an awkward situation. Um, hopefully it will at least be good for the aftermarket folks in Europe. <laughs> yeah, I think it would be funny. Really I kind of, I kind of almost want the low power one just to see how how the consistency is at such a low, low spring load. Because I, I mean, that would be that'll sick. Be, that would be fun. A pro level blaster that you could play with your ten year old with. I, I would love to have an X shot long shot that I can shoot in the house. Like that's hilarious. Mm -hmm. The you know I, I had I've tried the like the like you know end caps and the weaker springs and stuff for the Nexus or whatever and. It never felt good to shoot like it worked. It was lower, but like it wasn't fun to shoot or comfortable. Um, and it just kind of felt floppy. And, uh, you know, if they're actually releasing an off the shelf product that shoots like that and it's consistent and works well. Yeah, that's cool. That that could be kind of neat. But, you know, if it would be neat if they were selling the non pro X shot long shot. That's just the same frame and blaster intended to shoot at a lower level. But also one other thing to consider is is with the lower spring load, the plunger tube might not crack as easily. It's true, that actually. Is true. That is very that true. That is true. Okay. Uh let's move on to our game. Uh I it's so we're we're all really tired. It's really <laughs> obvious right now. Um so we may as well just keep plowing through this. Uh, it is time to play What's That Blaster, and it's my week to pick a blaster for uh, me to read the official nerf description to the rest of the crew and give them an opportunity to guess what the blaster is. If they can guess the blaster immediately, they get four points each. If they uh, can't, they can use some lifelines. They can ask the original capacity of the blaster. The um, year of release of the blaster and the uh other one uh <laughs> the original retail price and um for each one of those that they use they lose one potential point currently the score i'm at 22 vials at 20 jolt is at 30 uh grims is at 25 and not enough nerf is at three <laughs> but that's not really a fair comparison um yeah is everybody ready i have my blaster picked out let's do it sure. okay the name of blaster blaster features double barrel blasting this pump action blaster fires two darts in a row and gets you playing fast load one dart into each barrel pump the handle to prime and press the trigger trigger to fire one dart Prime the blaster and pull the trigger again to fire the second dart. Includes 12 official ammo. 
for multiple reloads. Official Nerf ammo are tested and approved for performance and quality and constructed of foam with flexible hollow tip. No batteries required. Can you say it again? Yep. I'm afraid that if I keep repeating it, though, I'm going to like accidentally say stuff I'm not supposed to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the blaster name, Blaster, features double barrel blasting. This pump action blaster fires two darts in a row and gets you playing fast. Load one dart into each barrel, pump the handle to prime, and press the trigger to fire one dart. Prime the blaster and pull the trigger again to fire the second dart. Includes capacity, official ammo for multiple reloads. I already told you that. I told you the number the first time. Oh, well. <laughs> um, official nerf ammo are tested and approved for performance. It's actually, I'm sorry, shoot. It's not capacity. It's just the included number. All mm -hmm. right. Well, whatever. Yeah. Free info, I guess. Well, we already know that it's the, the capacity. You already is know two. the capacity. <laughs> yeah. There's really no way for me to remove that. So, official nerf darts are tested and approved for performance and quality and constructed of foam with flexible hollow tips. No batteries required. I have two guesses, and I would say let, let's just ask for the release here because this could either be, in my mind, this is either the mega double breach or this is the one of those alpha strike things. You know the one. Yep. That I was just looking thing at that's it. always missing the pump. At yep. Goodwill. And it had the uh, the cheese grater grip, and then they later put the, the cover over it. What's that stupid thing called? The Tiger DB2 or something? Yeah. It, I remember Tiger was in the name. I was literally just looking at it earlier when I was cleaning up. Uh, or, or I think I, the reskin version is called, like, the Big Cat or something. Yeah. The, the problem with it, I don't think it would be the Double Breach because they... They only had storage for four darts on the side of it. Four dart, but think of it, it might have been a double your darts. Because think about then, it, 12 is double of six. True. I, even, but on Megas, they normally wouldn't give you that much extra ammo. I, at least not that yeah. I remember. I don't ever remember any Megas that's why, really. That's uh, why I say release year would be the thing that we, we should yeah, ask I, for. That I still think, yeah, I still think release year. We'll do release okay. here. Let's go. 20, 2019. <laughs> 2019. Okay, so it's the it's the Alpha Strike Tiger, yep. I believe. It Alpha was Strike called. Tiger. Uh, what, you oh. know, the pump action two dart one. That thing. <laughs> it's, the, it's the Tiger something. Oh, the something God. DB2. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's what we're going with. Because even I'm going to say that I'm with Jolt on this one. I literally was just looking at this thing. Screw you guys, I'm going home. <laughs> yes, it's the tiger. <laughs> <laughs> cannot fool you guys at all. All right. Well, that puts Vile at 23 and yes. Jolt at 33. I'm now lagging behind pretty badly. And technically Grim's at um, 28. It is, it is, in fact... Oh, yes, and Grim's at 28. Thank you. Uh, and <laughs> it is the Tiger DB2. Um, and uh, what is the reskin of that thing called? I'm pretty sure it was called uh, like the oh, big, big cat. Yeah, big cat DB2. It's just the same thing. <laughs> the most the amazing the nerf name ever. Like, I'm just saying. That's the funniest name they've ever had. It is pretty funny. Big cat. <laughs> oh, I forgot that the re-release of the stinger in blue is called the slinger. You gotta be kidding me. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, That's so weird. Okay. Anyway. All right. Well, that was quick. I don't know. I don't know how to, I don't know what to do to like take you guys anymore. <laughs> after you, after you got the Iron Man one, I was just kind of like, all right, this is over. <laughs> I don't know what to do. It's a here. jolt. What, what did you expect? You picked a freaking jolt. I picked a jolt, but it shoots an action figure. Like, <laughs> I, <laughs> but you picked a jolt. Oh my God. All right. Anyway. Um, probably the big topic for today is uh, this attempt Actually, to trademark. Actually, KT, the can we pause here yes. for, for, and take a break? Oh, man, um, I, I, I need to use the restroom. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, fine. You gotta, here's how you do it, KT. This is, the, what I've, this whole game has turned into for me has been, what can I do of features of a blaster that will throw you off the scent 
and I will try to read them and be like, oh, that'll make them think of this one. Yeah, see, I was hoping that, um, I was hoping, what was I hoping? I don't know, man. I was, what was I hoping? Um, yeah, no, I've had that thought. I've had that thought. Uh, there's actually a whole thing I skipped that there's like an Alpha Strike text that goes before it. Mm -hmm. Start blasting with Alpha Strike blasters from Nerf, the number one blaster brand. If you're new to the Nerf brand, Alpha Strike blasters are an awesome way to get into adrenaline pumping Nerf battles and experience <laughs> the power and performance of the Nerf brand. What, for, what kind of got me was when you, uh, when you said how many darts it came with, because yeah. to me, I instantly knew I was like, I know that it's not going to be anything else because that yeah. series, that was their big selling point. Cheat Blasters. Alpha Strike actually came with lots of ammo. Yeah, they first, the first thing they started doing was throwing a ton of ammo to try to up your reason to buy it. And I remember well, which that. Which is funny because they finally passed that over to some of the good Elite 2.0 Blasters. Yeah, true. And actually, they did have that one, didn't they? Didn't they do that in the Elite 2.0 that had the double barrel, just like the the alpha strike line uh yeah there's in the pack, a though. um it's the technician oh is that what it was called e easily one of my least fa it's in one of those multi-packs yeah it's easily one of my least favorite blasters of the last <laughs> ever just terrible it's so bad oh. it's so bad i ran it in an awfuls round once with like a big belt full of darts <laughs> i think i posted a short of me trying to fill up the belt it took like 15 minutes <laughs> stupid just need a dump yeah, pouch yeah, yeah, but I thought the belt was funnier. That is true. Why don't you just have oh. the, the wristbands that have the dart holder <laughs> just just make it even worse? Yeah. That would be pretty good. That'd be pretty good. Uh, I wish I wish those those uh X shot dart holder things worked on nerf rails. Oh the, are ones, they pick the ones that look like the PDK films. Yeah, are they stuff. pick rail? I I because I recently picked up the um the rage fire and i have I, some but i have not i have a rage fire i have not even opened it i want to do i want to do a like open a open and react review and then do some like testing with it after mm. i just haven't i haven't made the time it's i like i haven't fired it like i haven't put batteries in it to check it out but so far yeah. it's actually a really fun blaster and i don't remember who it was but the the guy who put it on like he originally had one on his forearm, like arm mounted, and then he put three. And I was like, okay, that's ridiculously cool. And I, really the first funny. thing I did with it before I even see, saw his post was I put it on my arm and I'm like, this needs to be arm mounted, like wrist mounted. <laughs> it's so stupid. The moment you get it, you're going to be like, oh, I totally see it. <laughs> like, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, like it's, it definitely looks like a fun blaster. I, I'm, they're going to be one of those things where you're never going to find the chains. They're never going to come with the attachments. Oh, they're going to be course. missing yeah, everything. Yeah, they're going to show up in thrift stores with none of the... The, I, the tripods will disappear. Yep. The chains will disappear. All the attachments that hold the darts are going to be gone. The, the tripod's even worse because it, it has a locking pin and it rotates and like locks in. That locking pin's going to get lost and then the tripod's just going to be useless. Oh, that sucks. So, yeah, that's the one thing I'm like, I know that's... I, I mean, I don't care. If I, if I see them in thrift stores, I am definitely going to pick them up because they are, they're like cool shells and they're cool like blasters. I, I, yeah. I think it's a good option. Um, and I think there's a lot of fun potential of what you could build out of it, but it is definitely going to be missing everything. Yeah, for sure. There'll definitely be good stuff to do with them. Oh, the, I, I'm holding on to the dart storage. I didn't know that. What? The pick rail thing, like, you know, it's sort of like a pick rail is what it looks like. It just okay. press fits into it. You can take it out. Oh. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. I was just, I was like, I was like, wait a minute. That just looks like it's, yeah, you can absolutely just push that out. It's just a, um, it's just a post. That means that you could just, you can 3D print your own with an in-strike adapter. Oh my God. I, I. We're going to be doing some 3D modeling this weekend, and <laughs> I think we're going to do an in-strike rail adapter for this, for people to carry them on their blasters. That's funny. That'll be fun. 
I think that's what yeah, we can do. Yeah, that would be do. really cool. You need to get your printer back up and running, because I've got stuff for you now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll have the space again soon when my friends move out, but back, I think I it's going to be really great. Uh, all this talk of Drake Rails, real legend, is Doc Payne. <laughs> True. Amazing. Gotta have that ultimate gun versus gun thumbnail. I know, right? Uh, I don't know how to transition back into this. <laughs> Just start how you were starting before. Yeah, I guess so. So, um, uh, I, I explained this, I think, pretty clearly in the episode, uh, but, um, the, uh, a company which is either the, it's clearly associated with Dart Zone and Primetime Toys, which is the parent company to Dart Zone. That has frequently, very frequently trademarked and patented things that are Dart Zone products in the name of Dart Zone and Primetime uh, is <clears throat> filed last year to try to trademark the term blaster tag for use both with toy products as well as for event hosting. And for it specifically calls out making news presentations on the internet related to blaster tag events and uh there's some weird history behind this yeah and uh i don't know how to take this like i've heard some people say that it like like theoretically they're trying to protect it for the community to use it. I I'm going to say right now that. that's bullshit right there. I'm sorry. I don't well, trust that. And, and well, and so part of the point that I was trying to make, and it's a very compacted point in the show because I was trying to keep the segment <clears throat> short, and I still feel like I kind of rambled in the last part of it. Even if the current leadership of Primetime and Dart Zone is gung ho about, like, hey, we're just going to spend all this money to copyright this term as a community good for our customers we're going to protect it and and we're going to own it and we're just not going to pursue any uses of it what happens when the leadership changes at the company and the new person's like oh wait we own this trademark and we're not defending it no 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 sue all these people what happens when one person does use blaster tag in a way that they don't like Mm -hmm. or that doesn't align with their vision of what the community is doing. What, like, there's so many possibilities. Or what happens when they finally decide to use that name on an actual product and someone else in the hobby already makes a product, like a 3D printed blaster or a product that serves a similar purpose? Now, what happens if an automated internet trademark bot finds them and sends them a cease and desist. Well, it's not even that. They, they could even take uh, full-on revenue. So under YouTube's guidelines, like just, I'll just take YouTube as an example. If, if they, like say, you know, all these other YouTubers and other people who are in the hobby doing similar stuff to us who are trying to report on news and trying to report on this, if the bot picks up that you said or are talking about blaster tag, they can now claim that you are are directly violating their copyright and all of your AdSense or revenue that you could potentially have been making on it is now theirs. And they will take that from you. That That mm -hmm. is how deep this could potentially get. And a lot of people will be like, well, you know, they wouldn't do that. No, the problem is, is that you, you want to assume that people have good intentions, but a bot doesn't care. The bot doesn't give a crap and a bot could potentially do it. And in some cases, there's a broken system. YouTube's uh, copyright claims can actually be claimed by somebody who doesn't actually own the copyright because it is a yeah. it's, it's unfortunately a very broken system. There's a lot of people who talk about it. You know, we're not here to get into it that deeply, but that is how bad that is. If it is something that can't that is copywritten, people will sometimes abuse the system they will say i own the copyright and i need all of the revenue that was made on this through you know for however long and they can strike a, a channel down to the point that it gets completely banned like disbanded they will 
because you know obviously under certain rules if you get three strikes your channel's basically gone and right. you cannot make this so people who are even doing this who may not get much anything out of it as an as it is like say uh, beret or something like that or captain xavier or even drac you start looking at larger people who've been around for forever and videos that are seven or eight years old that or that they might have been talking about blaster tag the right these these things if you copyright that they can go back to videos that were made prior to the copyright and even strike it it's not because it's necessarily right or legally they can do it it's that there is so much red tape that all they have to do yeah. is make the claim the bot just says okay youtube tries to tell you there's always somebody you know an actual person behind there and again we've seen this time and time again that there's not and now those people their channels get destroyed their any revenue that they were making on it gets completely taken from them you know some people who do this potentially for a living or at least for some side income that that is huge you have to understand the implications of of also what something a copyright... to remember is that when your account gets banned any other channel based on that that like gmail account or something those also get yes. banned they all get linked to that and you have to understand how important that is it's very very important and it's in you brought it up even in your thing of you know blaster tag association they yeah. can potentially They're kind of be, the obvious example their yeah, entire they, name yeah. is tied to that <laughs> yeah and i mean even places that are are you know non-profit organizations and stuff like that could be hit and that's that even so to me yeah. what this looks like this is if the nfl decided to trademark football like no right. you don't get to do that i'm sorry yeah. that's that's yeah. crap right well, there. and uh, you know uh, the there's you know uh i also talked about how jangular attempted to take this trademark for that purpose to like set it aside 27 in 2018 and was told it's too general and you can't trademark that so i mean fingers crossed i guess but um you know i looked up jangular's attempt to do it um and let's see if i can find it again uh it seemed like it didn't where is it here 2018-04-28, new application, entered, office supply data, assigned to examiner, um, four months later, non-final action written the next day, and notified, and after that, they didn't respond anymore. Um, so, this whole process of apply, so like, I guess what I'm trying to say is, I want to believe that this one will be rejected for the same reason. However, we are not now talking about a hobbyist with few resources attempting to copyright the title. We are talking about a very large company with a lot of money and lawyers trying to copyright the name. And what I believe here, at least, to be Jangular's attempt to copyright it is was. Um, lasted for four months and then was essentially rejected um this one is over a year into the process they've gotten and further I, it <laughs> seems like they've gotten over that the hump that stopped jangular now i am not claiming to be an expert in trademark law i i'm just making guesses uh based on the information in front of me maybe i'm wrong but that's what it feels like. Um, and now we're sort of left with this $600 opportunity to <laughs> yeah, to say, hey, this seems bad. Um, you know, uh, fingers crossed, maybe like out of darts or one of the hobby companies or something will have, you know, the funds and the resources to put up some kind of resistance to this um or you know it would be great if if dart zone or primetime or what what are they called haze bond haze bond limited is it as bond uh, haze bond or as, as... 
Oh, Ease Easebon. Easebon, that's what it was. Yeah. E- Easebon Services Limited. We'll just communicate at least. Like that would be a nice first step. Uh, just like, hey, like we know that there's some concern about this. Here is our plan. So at least there was some communication. In the absence of communication, it feels like it's in bad faith. So. Um, yeah. And. Uh, and I, I gotta then, be honest here. Like hot take. Whoever is responsible for this should be ashamed of themselves. Just, I mean, like, this is this is really normal business stuff. I hate it, but it's really normal business stuff. Like someone just thinks that it's they're normal doing doesn't mean the best. They shouldn't be ashamed of themselves. No, no, I agree. But I, whoever's doing this, thinks that they're doing just like the thing they're supposed to do for their company. Actually, you know what? You know what? I'm sorry. I say this. I actually found uh, the name of the lawyer. <laughs> who's involved in this <laughs> and i i suspect that it's actually um the cuz like on the request the lawyer the law office is listed and um please do not email this lawyer listeners and and, and start harassing them yeah don't go um, out there and do that do but, it the normal way but anyway. like but it seems like what i'm trying to get at is that it seems like this person specializes in helping brands like like protect their whatever and i have a feeling that this lawyer's office identified blaster tag as a term they should try to own um and that's why they're doing it uh, more than anything um and it may actually just be that law office pushing it but my Again, my question I'm, is: Is where is Hasbro in all of this? Because Blaster Tag would technically be something they'd probably want to use too. That's true. true. We like, uh, where are like the Hasbro lawyers in this. Come on, Hasbro, maybe, for once, use your lawyers for something good. I mean, maybe there's something going on there. Maybe they are preparing a response. Maybe they put something in. I have no idea. Um, I don't think that if there was a request already put in to delay it, which is another thing that you can do, is set is request a request a uh, delay to have longer to put a um, response together. Maybe that already exists. I don't think we would publicly be able to see that. Um, but it would, yeah. Um, I don't know. The, the, you know, where it's not quite like the CPSC thing where it was easy for people to go in and just drop a comment. Um, yeah, six hundred dollar filing it's fee. It's a six hundred dollar fee to file. Like it's obviously intended for companies to do it. Yeah, not for individuals to do it. Um, but individuals, of course, are the ones who are going to pay the price here, uh, because the whole point of this term is that it's widely used by a hobby of loosely or disorganized people. <laughs> yeah. So nonprofit and, organizations as well. That's my other pro, uh, frustration yeah. with it. You're trying to tell right. a nonprofit to throw down six hundred dollars, you know, to try to defend its its ability and its its right to to be a not to stay a nonprofit and use the name that it's had for you know going on a decade or more in some cases. Like it's it's crazy to me, but yeah, 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 uh, and then you know. If this all goes through, the robots are going to try to come and take all of our fun. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. There won't be much that we can do about it. So hopefully some kind of resistance is mounted to this. I don't, I don't know that there's much that we can do on an individual level, unfortunately, to respond. Maybe, maybe someone who has more knowledge about it will, will have an answer. will have a suggestion, but it's not me. Um, on that, uh, super upbeat note there, <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, the, you know, the thing about this, it's not like end of our hobby kind of stuff. Um, I think about all the, all the content creators, including us currently who have nerf in the name that nerf does not come for. Yeah. Um, and you know, mentioning earlier, the Hampton Roads Blaster Club, changing their name from the Hampton Roads Nerf Club just because they wanted to be able to distance themselves from that. But like all the people, that's the thing, I guess actually that's the thing that's really frustrating to me is there's been such a move to like try to get, you know, Dart Zone is very picky about people not using the word nerf to describe the sport. 
And so we've all moved to terms like blasters, blaster tag, um, all these other things. And now they're trying to trademark one of those terms so that we can't use it. Yeah. It's, it's like, well, what do you want us to call it, man? Like at what point, <laughs> yeah. you know, just like give us, leave us alone. Anyway, frustrating. Let's end on something fun. Um, so, you know, we just, we just are about to get these Nerf Happy Meal toys, uh, which Jolt covered on the show. Uh, we've gotten Nerf Happy Meal toys twice before, 2019 and 2015. In 2015, we even had, like, Blaster and Rebel-themed toys. Now it's 2023. We have the little disc launchers and the little sports balls. Now imagine it's 2030. And uh, that appears to be about the, the gap between years that Nerf does Happy Meal toys. Um, what line in Nerf's au revoir currently would you like to see them bringing back as Happy Meal toys in 2030? So you're going to get little teeny tiny versions of them, right? Little funky little little things themed after a current a current nerf line mm. i have one though i'll just go and then maybe that'll kickstart kickstart this dino squad well that i would love perfect. to see, i would love to see little little dinosaur disc launchers and um little a little teeny tiny version of um one of the blasters that like pops the ball into the into the hoop that'd be really fun how many dinosaurs will they have in that line by then you know they still are adding them amazingly true i'm actually glad i do like them personally i want the oh, i'm, what's I'm it called? so glad that line has survived i i still want the what is it the pterodact i want that one to go down that in one. price i'm waiting for to either find one at a thrift store or for it to like go on a clearance price yeah, that I actually looks pretty really, cool. I actually really want it. I still have to finish my integration, too, of, of uh, the Rex Rampage that I've got. I was going to say, I've always been a little bit surprised that we don't, that the, the McDonald's toys don't just, like, shoot a dart. Like, darts aren't that expensive. Yeah, I mean, It's no, probably because like, the age of the children who are getting Happy Meals. That's, that's true. They can't control the age, the age range that they receive. Yeah, but they're always those plastic, like they're spring-loaded and they're like a plastic spoon launcher, right? That's so true. They shoot like yeah, five we feet. used to have those. Yeah, I mean, they're not like, they're not the, the best, but it's still kind of a, it's always well, been Well, yeah, weird. so just let something shoot a dart five feet. Fine. Yeah. It's a happy but meal like, toy. here's the thing. The dart is soft and squishy, so it'll get all damaged in, in the standard McDonald's packaging. True. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. That's true. Well, you do, it, have, do, it, do a rival round then. <laughs> it's, give me the go. weakest, give me the weakest mm. rival round slingshot. It's like you have a ball popper <laughs> of a yeah. rival round. I think oh for me, if they were going to do a, a, a uh, line, I want something that's like the, um, the old Max Force line. I want one of those old, like, mm. the bug, because they always did, like, the crazy bugs or, like, weird fish stuff. Yeah. I want something like that. See, we just want the critters. We, I want, yeah, I want, because that's what it, I grew up with. I remember, like, yeah, I remember the, the pins that were, like, race cars, like, and the front end of it would come off and it was a pin or something yeah. goofy like that or you know and that's as a kid when i wanted a happy meal that's what i was getting i was so excited because i would have a this race car pin when i was in school and i'm like you know and i'm playing with it in class totally and then totally. i pop it off and it, you know you, it's the same thing right you want something that's like a, a car or uh it, it kind of serves like two purposes right it's not just a blaster it's also like this you know crazy monster or something like that what is it the oozinator or something from the super soaker line totally I actually speaking of that that is my answer is i want i want super soakers i don't want nerf in my happy meal i want super oh, super little, the little tiny I've done that super a couple of times and they were always great the little they were always adorable. Ones? yeah yeah the the, i have a couple of them they're, they're adorable and they work pretty okay yeah like, give us those. those would be good that's so true. But of course, my screw you, I hate the rules answer is, come on, we need, we need the return of the Bionicle McTorin. 
The first, <laughs> for those who don't know, the uh, the first Bionicle sets were actually Happy Meal toys. Um, funnily enough, they shot the same discs as the later disc launchers that resemble very closely these new disc launchers in the Happy Meal toys. Yep. Right. Uh, yeah, I have a couple of them. They're they're adorable. That's fun. I I, I, I miss the days where Happy Meal toys were like a small Lego set. Yeah, yes, right? come on, give us like, Lego and Hot Wheels. You know the good so stuff. Good. We are getting uh, tying it back to uh, the beginning of the podcast for me. We are getting Pokemon cards again soon. Um, As a Happy Meal that, toy. The, so we uh, they have them in the UK already. We don't have a set date, but I honestly think they might just be the next release after the nerf stuff. I don't even like Pokemon, um, and that's kind of cool. There's there the way that they do it is you get you get a pack that comes with like three card or it's like four cards, one hollow and a two or three um, non hollows, and um. You know, they all, they're all they all currently in production cards, but they have a different hollow pattern that's, like, really pretty and sparkly. And they oh, have so a like different uniques. set icon on them um, for the McDonald's set. And this year, there's actually, like, one or two of the cards are, like, kind of playable, potentially. And it's always kind of fun to have, like, the weird McDonald's version of the card in your deck uh, if it's actually a decent card. Um, but they also have a game where the pack comes with a little, this year they've simplified it even further, but it's actually a good setup where it's a little, it's like a cardboard sort of coin and you flip the coin and both the side, the side that it lands on and the direction it's pointing, the direction it's rotated, indicate which version of the game you play. And then you compare the stats on the card. Huh. And whoever's stat is higher wins. So it's really cute. And it's actually like people get started in the game this way because it, it makes them like actually look at the numbers on the card and like look at the attacks on the card and stuff like that. Um, All right. And if it you also can uses combine the like that, height of the Pokemon and stuff. So if you can combine that Pokemon TCG and that type of game with Pogs, I'd be in. I mean. <laughs> I still have my Pog collection. Get out of here. Oh my god, no way. You know, it's funny, in the Pokemon <laughs> TCG, there's a lot of coin flips, oh. but the vast majority of people do not flip coins. We roll dice. Evens are heads and odds are tails. This is actually in the rules. And part of the reason for it, flipping a coin successfully and making it land where it's supposed to and having it rotate enough times in the air and starting it at the right height to be truly random it's not easy. Yeah, I can and actually... Like, especially for a kid's game. <laughs> yeah. Kids are always bringing their favorite coin, and they, like, hold their hand right at table level, and they try to flip it, and it just, like, falls off their hand, and you're like, that didn't flip. Yeah. That, like, it's... The, the direction that the coin landed is whichever <laughs> side was facing up when you moved your thumb. <laughs> yeah. So... Okay, I feel like we're um, going off on a on a bit of a tangent here. So how about my oh, tangent fine. now, where we talk about Bionicle <laughs> lore and? Uh... Oh great! Now we're going to the Bionicle tangent. Oh no, the Bonicles, the Bonicles. <laughs> okay, well, I think I'm actually going to just. Uh, we had a little Bionicle tangent. We had a little Pokemon tangent, and I think we should just cap this episode off. I know that we're all quite. But tired, what about the eating but, hot um, glue tangent? That the eating hot glue tangent is universal. It is the universal language. Um, thanks to all for chatting. I think we actually, despite our exhaustion, I think we had some good chats. Um, I think that this blaster tag trademark issue is going to be a significant uh, thing, and I hope that there's some movement on it. I'd love to be able to come back. Um, I should say, actually, this is no one's going to listen to this point in the podcast at this point, but. <laughs> Uh, the period started on the 15th. It's a month. It's 30 days long. So you have theoretically until the 14th of September to put in an, a notice of opposition. Um, I don't know who's doing that, but if you want to, you have one, two, three weeks from today, the recording day. So less by the time you hear this. So... If you've got an idea out there and a good way to oppose this, or at least like get some information about what is actually going on with it, 
I'd love to see it. Say something. Post it. Join the Discord. Say what's up. Post publicly somewhere. Talk on Reddit. Whatever. I hope someone has a plan. But, um... Yeah. Hopefully. Something will happen with that. Anyway, uh, that's enough for me. I gotta go to bed. I have to edit this tomorrow. Good night, friends. Good night. Good night. Eating hot glue. Every time. Every time. Okay. True. <laughs>